little different video for you today. This is going to be Beauty on a Budget. Um, one of my very sweet longtime subscribers requested this video a long time ago. And I've kept it on my list and I have been meaning to do it because I think it's a great idea for a video, um, but it kind of got pushed back. And then also I've been trying to think of different things to share with you guys. So basically what it's going to be is I'm just going to share some different little money saving tips with you just on how we can still be girly girls, we can still enjoy our makeup and our beauty stuff, but maybe in a more budget friendly way. Um, these are not like groundbreaking, earth shattering kind of profound things, but they're just some little tips and tricks that I try to follow. And just to be honest, I don't follow them all but I try to, and I'll point out the ones that I struggle with. But um, I think that there's some good things that I think definitely help and add up, you know, a little bit at a time. It does add up. So yeah, I've got different categories here. So lots to talk about. So let's jump in. Okay, the first thing I'm going to talk about is coupons and reward programs. I think it is a great idea to join reward programs. Like Sephora and Ulta, they each have reward programs, but also Walgreens, CVS, um, even clothing stores like Kohl's and other ones that are not attached to a credit card. So you don't have to have the credit card in order to be a part of their reward program. So for Sephora and Ulta, when you're making purchases and you're a part of their reward program, you are earning points towards something. So for Ulta, you can redeem your points for different little items based on how many points you've earned. Same thing with Sephora. You can um, get a 100 point perk or you can get something that is a 500 point perk and you can save up your points. So with the reward programs, my thought is if you're already going to be making purchases, you might as well be earning something for it. Um, and Walgreens and CVS, like CVS, if you spend $50 um, in their beauty department, you get $5 back if you have a CVS card. Same with Walgreens, you earn different points and then you can get it for cash back towards your um, next purchase. So I think that reward programs are a really great idea and most every store is going to ask you if you're a part of their reward program, but if they don't ask, ask them if they have a reward program. So I think that is a great, great tip. Okay, next is a really simple one, joining email lists to be notified of sales and coupons at stores. Um, what I do is I pretty much sign up for most email lists um, for the different stores that I frequent. You know, ones that I don't go often to, I don't usually do that, but ones that I'll go into, I like to be subscribed to their emails because then I can be notified of their sales and their coupons. Now, sometimes it can get me in trouble because I want to go to the stores once I see that they're having a great sale, so sometimes I purposely don't check my email so I'm not tempted, but for the most part I think it's a great idea because then you can plan your shopping around when the sales are happening or if you're already planning on going to a store or you're at a store, you can just check through your email and see if you have a coupon in there. So, and a lot of times I do. Um, now Sephora and Ulta don't do that as much because they don't really have as many coupon type things going on, especially for prestige cosmetics, but they do sometimes. So it's good to be on their email. Like Ulta, you know, just had one recently. So that's a good idea. Um, so I'll plan around the sales and I'll hang on to those coupons for um, when I'm going to those stores. So most every store will ask you about their email list, but you can also ask them, say, do you have an email list for coupons and sign up for that. And sometimes they'll even give you an initial coupon for signing up, which is even better. Another tip is to use Ebates. And I heard girls talk about Ebates on YouTube for a long time before I finally signed up. I don't know why, but I just didn't. And then I finally signed up and then I wasn't using it until recently. And all Ebates is, is it is free to create an account. So you just go to Ebates. I'll have a link down below. It's, you don't have to use my link, but if you do, cool. Um, so you go there and then you sign up for a free account and then you can search for different stores. So you can search for Sephora, Ulta, Amazon, um, all kinds of stores, like so, so many are on there. And then they direct you to the Sephora site or to the Ulta site, but then you earn cash back. And different stores will do different cash backs at any given time. So Sephora may typically do like 4%, but sometimes they do 8%, sometimes they do 10%. So you can watch for those different things and it really does add up. So especially if you're trying to like reach a certain amount so that you get free shipping and then you get your Ebates percentage back, it definitely adds up. And I don't know, like I guess I thought it was like fishy or something at first, so I'm not sure why I waited to sign up and actually start using it but I have recently and I'm earning cash back and it actually does work. So I think it's a really good idea and my thought is if you're already gonna be shopping online, you might as well go through Ebates and get that percentage back, why not? 
Okay, my next two tips are related to your makeup collection. So the first one is keeping your makeup organized so you know what you have. And this is not a profound thing, but it's just, I think, an important thing to remember. Because I think if our makeup is all like disorganized and everywhere, we're more likely to accidentally either A, buy the exact same product, I'm more likely to do this at the drugstore because I think, oh, well, that's only $2. I don't think I have that, but I might go ahead and get it, and then I realize I do. So I think having your makeup organized, you're less likely to do that or less likely to buy 15 pink blushes. Now, not that we don't do that <laughs> because every pink is slightly different. You know what I mean? But I think having it organized, we're more likely to know exactly what we have in our collection and not buy duplicates or at least very, very similar products. Um, also, going in with a list so you know what you're getting and so you don't do as much free shopping. Now, I am not good about doing this, but I really, really try. I put a list in my phone and I think, okay, I've got my coupon here, I want to go buy this, and that is what I'm going for. Do I end up still free shopping? Yes but it's less likely, um, especially if I'm on a time crunch. So sometimes I try to purposely do that. I go with a time crunch and with a list so that I go in right with what I'm wanting to get. So I go in, know what I'm getting, and I'm not just kind of walking around and adding lots of extra things into my basket. Okay, these next tips are all related to what kind of things to buy. So the first tip would be buying staples and neutrals. Just those things that you're going to get lots and lots of use out of that are going to go with each other seamlessly. So staple examples would be um, like Ben Nye's Honey, where it's a really great blending shade for your eyeshadow. Max Soft Brown is another example of this, or Physicians Formula has the Canyon Classic Squad. Just something that you're going to be able to get lots of use out of. Um, also, like a really great um, dark, dark shade to deepen up your outer corner. This is going to work for so many different eye looks. It's just a really great, useful thing to have in your collection. This is um, Smashbox Rapture, so you don't have to have this specific one, but any kind of a deep color that's just going to work with different looks and you're going to get a lot of use out of. Um, neutrals. Neutrals would be like Tarte's Exposed. This is a really nice, um, kind of a pinky nude blush. This is going to go with any eye look you have going, any lip that you're going to want to wear that day, this is going to go. So you're going to get lots of use out of. Um, out of it. It's not like having like a bright red sort of a blush, which is fun and a fun thing to have in your collection, but you may not get as much use out of it. Whereas this one is a really great investment because you're going to be able to use it on so many different days with so many different looks. Also neutral kind of lipsticks like this is um, Urban Decay's Revolution Lipstick in Native. This is kind of a pinky nude. It just goes with anything and it's beautiful. It is a pricier item, but you can find things at the drugstore that would do the exact same thing. And then also, um, Max Angel is another really great example. Angel is right here. And this one is um, Urban Decay. So both of those are a great example. I mean, look, it's like a little nub because I've used it so much. Um, but these just kind of like staples in your collection and neutrals that are all going to go together and you're going to get tons of use out of are really great investments for your collection. Another tip would be finding really great bases and primers that work for you. Now I say for you because everybody's slightly different. So it may take you a little bit of an investment to find the things that work really, really well for you. But once you do, you are creating a really great foundation for other products. Meaning like, here's an example. I love the Wet n Wild Fergie eyeshadow primer. This is a really inexpensive primer from the drugstore, but it's my favorite. It works really, really well. So if I use this primer, I'm able to take cheaper eyeshadows and they perform better because I'm laying a great foundation for them with this primer. Another example would be a really great face primer. So this is the L'Oreal Revitalift Miracle Blur. This is in the oil-free formula. Now this is an investment. This is $20 to $25 depending on where you get it. But you need so little, it's going to last you a really long time. But when you use a primer like this, you're able to use maybe cheaper foundations or even cheaper blushes, and it's going to just go on more smoothly. It's going to bring out the vibrancy in your blushes because your foundation is going to work better. It just it lays a better foundation for you so that those possibly cheaper, um, more cost-effective products are going to work better. So I think that primers and bases are a really great idea. 
Another tip would be buying multitasking products or just making products you already have multitaskers. And I'm really guilty of forgetting to do this, but it really is a great tip. Um, an example would be Max. Um, this is Max Angel. It's a kind of really pretty neutrally kind of a pink. It just goes with so many different looks. So obviously it's a lipstick, but also I used to carry this in my purse for forever. And when I would do a little touch up with my makeup during the day, like I would powder, and then I would need a little bit of color, I would just dab this on my cheeks and rub it in for my blush. So I think remembering, you know, lipsticks can be blushes. Um, blushes can be eyeshadows. Eyeshadows can be highlighters. This is another example. This is Inglot's Pearl 395. And it's just gorgeous. Now it's super pigmented, so you have to be, you know, light handed with it, but this can be your face highlight. So maybe when you're thinking, I really want a gold highlight, Maybe you go check out your eyeshadow collection and you realize you have an eyeshadow that will work perfectly for a cheek highlight. So like I said, I'm really guilty about doing this. I always forget to do this, but it really is a great money saving tip. Another tip would be looking at the quantity on items. I do this mainly with eyeshadow as far as makeup goes, but I do this with food too. <laughs> um, just looking at what the price per ounce is for things is a really good idea. Um, sometimes, you know, you may have, this is, these are two different brands, obviously, but this is just an example. There may be two different sizes there, but once you figure out the price per ounce, the bigger size may not be the better value. Sometimes it may be the smaller size, or sometimes they may be the same, so that you can just go ahead and go with the smaller one. So food companies sometimes get you with that. They kind of like trick you that sometimes they, you think, oh, well, if I get the bigger um, jumbo size or party size, it's a better value, but not always. So I'll literally take out my calculator and figure out the price per ounce um, and figure out which one's the better deal. I was doing that with coconut oil the other day. Um, but also for eyeshadows, I will go and compare palettes and I'll look and see, oh my gosh, this is such a better price per ounce. I'm going to go with this one. So I think that's just a great um, money saving tip in general, but it can also apply to makeup. Next is to check reviews. There is so much information available on YouTube, on blogs, just Googling different images on things. I follow YouTube videos. I watch so many different girls that have so many great recommendations. I follow different blogs. I will literally stand in the store and look up swatches of something to see, do I think I'm gonna like it? And sometimes, you know, I may be holding a nail polish and I look up a swatch online of that nail polish and it ends up looking a lot more sheer. And I didn't realize that until I looked up that picture. So I think that that is such a great tip because not only does it save you money, but it also saves you time. So I would say just using the information that is available out there is a great idea. And then finally would be knowing your store's return policy. Maybe after all your research, you think that you're making a really great purchase, but maybe it just doesn't work out for you. So knowing your store's return policy is really important. Now, Sephora, Ulta, Walgreens, CVS, those all have great return policies, at least in the US. They really are great about backing up their products, and if you're not pleased with your purchase, they will let you take it back. Now, it's important to know what is their policy as far as receipts go. Most stores want you to have your receipt in order to get your original payment back, either on you know on your card or back in cash or however you paid. Otherwise, they may give you store credit. So knowing that, keeping track of your receipts if you're thinking about things is important too. Um, now for me, the Walmart and the Target in my area really aren't a fan of people bringing back makeup. I don't even know what their policy is, but they kind of give you some problems. So I don't even go there unless it's something I know I really like. If I'm trying something out, I'll be more likely to get it from Walgreens or uh, CVS so that I know I can bring it back and I keep my receipts. Okay guys, so those were all of my beauty on a budget tips. Like I said, they were nothing profound or earth shattering, but I do hope that they were helpful for you and maybe gave you some ideas on, you know, just some little money saving tips for your makeup and beauty shopping. Um, so I hope it was helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Definitely share your tips down below. I would love to read them and I know other girls would love to read them. So if you have any tips, leave those down below in the comment section. We would all love to read those. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you're not already and I will see you in my next video. Bye.